Hi everyone. So, last time uh, we were talking about composite functions and we were talking about inverses. So I'm just going to make that really clear before we get going. First off, composite functions. So if I had um, f of x equals uh, 3x plus 1, g of x is uh, x squared, and h of x equals minus x. If I wanted to do fg of h of x, that would be the same as fg, always working inside out. h of x is minus x, so f of g of minus x, so whatever's in that bracket replaces this one, so that's minus x all squared, so that's f of x squared. And wherever the x is seen, that replaces here, so we've got 3 of x squared plus 1 because f takes whatever's in that bracket, multiplies it by 3, and then adds 1. So that's 3x squared plus 1. Likewise, if I had something like solve, um, solve, uh, let's say solve h, h of f of x equals x, then I would have h of h of you see, working inside out again. H, H of F of X is 3X plus 1. And this still equals X. Carry on going. H, H of 3X plus 1 is minus whatever is in there. So minus 3X minus 1 equals X. H it again. So minus whatever is in there. So that's 3X plus 1 equals X. So now I can solve bring the plus 1 over, bring the x over, so 2x equals minus 1, so x equals minus a half. There we go, solved. That's how you would solve something like that. This is a really common type of C3 exam question. Really common. Okay, we then talked about inverses, and that's what this one's all about. Inverses, inverse functions what has an inverse and how do you draw inverses and how does it work with the mapping let's really get that clear again so you had th three bubbles right i'm saying that if you start off with x that's got a domain of f f takes x so at the moment i've got uh f of x as my range right so the range of f is f of x so and here I get f of x, and then if I want to inverse something, that's denoted by f to the power minus 1. That does not mean 1 over something. It's literally the inverse of something, so the opposite of something. So if I take x, do something to it, and then do the opposite of it, what am I going to end up with? Well, I'm going to end up with x, aren't I? So if I have f of x and then I inverse what I just did to x, then I'm going to end up with x. Just like if I started with the inverse of f and then I f'd it. So if I stepped forward, stepped backwards, sorry, and then stepped forward again, I end up back where I started with. Really important property here to learn, okay? Because what it's saying is if I have f g of x equals x, then therefore g of x must be the inverse, must be the same as the inverse of f, otherwise that's not, that property wouldn't hold, likewise f must be the, g, the inverse of g, you see? So it's really helpful, uh, it's a really helpful property, okay? How do we use it though? How do we use it? Well, let's... Uh, oh yeah, let's go over one last bit of theory then, is that only one-to-ones functions have inverses. Why? Because how do you sketch an inverse? You sketch an inverse by reflecting it in the line y equals x, right? So this is a mirror line. So if I have a quadratic like this, if I took the inverse of it, it would mirror like this 
but this is not a function. Remember, this is a many to one. If I flip it, I produce a one to many, and anything ending in to many uh, is not a function. So only one to ones have inverses. But there are ways to make many to ones. Uh, one to one by restricting the domain. Remember, if I got rid of that whole section, then that would get rid of that whole section, and therefore I would only be left with this, which is a one to one, and this bit is a one to one. So there are ways to make one to ones, but if nothing's been done to a many to one, it will not have an inverse. Okay, so let's recapture all that. Let's go back to our inverse function example then. No, oh, it takes ages to rub this thing up. Okay, so we've got find the inverse of f of x equals 3x plus 2. So remember what f does. f takes whatever's in that brackets, times it by 3, and then it adds 2 to it. Okay, and it's said the domain, so I've got f of x equals 3x plus 2. Domain of f, that's really helpful if you write domain of f is greater than 1. And therefore, its range, f of x, remember, range always has an f next to it. Domains only have x's in it. So here's the graph. Graph's are always good. There's two, the y-intercept, f of x is 3x plus 2. The graph starts from x is greater than 1. So here's 1. 1 is not inclusive, so I'll draw a little circle around it, an open circle. And you can see then that the y value, the range, f of x, must be greater than whatever value um, 1 gives to it. So 3 times 1 is 1, plus 2 is 5. This thing must be bigger than 5. You can see it from the graph, can't you? So the range is f of x is greater than 5. That's good. That helps. So, find the inverse of the function. How do you do that? Well, for... 4f to the minus 1, like I say, if you times something by 3 and then add 2 to it, and then the inverse of that is the opposite, then of course we're going to have to go backwards. We're going to have minus 2, and then we're going to divide by 3. So the way to do it is you know that when you're doing the inverse of a function, everything flips in y equals x, doesn't it? Everything flips over. So therefore, if everything is mirrored, if everything is mirrored, then your x's become the same as y's, and your y's become the same as x's. So this point of uh, 2 giving 4 right, will now be 4 on the x giving 2. All the x's and y's swap over. Therefore, the domain and range swap over. It's a composite function. So for f to the minus 1, you could say let x equal 3 f to the minus 1 of x plus 2. So basically all I'm doing is swapping all my f of x's with x's and my x's with f to the minus 1 of x. So then I can make f to the minus 1 the subject. So that helps me to go backwards. So x minus 2 is 3 f to the minus 1 of x. Divide everything by 3 and I get my x minus 2 over 3. And there we go. So that is the inverse function, isn't it? Right? But we also need to sort out the domain. We said that all the x and y's swap places. So therefore, the domain of f to the minus 1 must be the range of f. But remember, all domains have x's in it, not f of x's. Whereas the range becomes the old domain of f. So f to the minus 1 of x must be greater than 1. You can see that from the graph. Let's just quickly see that. So we started off with um, x being 1. It went up. This was 5, wasn't it? And now if we did the inverse of it, if we reflected that in the line y equals x here, then actually we are going to have where we've got 1 and 5 there, 1 and 5 there, we're now going to have 5 and 1. Open hat again. And now 
this goes up, doesn't it? So if uh, x was 2, this would give us 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So therefore, 2 would give us now 8. And you can see the graph going uh, along like that now. So actually, if I was to put it on the same graph, it's going to look like that, isn't it? It's going to reflect in that line. Let's do another one. Find the inverse function of f of x equals 3x plus 2. Yeah, we've just done that one. Let's do another one. <laughs> Find the inverse function of f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, where x is all the real state in the domain and range of your inverse function. Well, straight away, uh, alarm bells should be ring because this is a many to one. This is a quadratic, isn't it? So our old friend completing the square is going to come out here because we need to know what the turning point is. Wherever this thing is, I told you earlier, where the turning point is, if we restrict the domain, it becomes a one-to-one -one and therefore we can provide an inverse. We can't provide an inverse at the moment for the whole thing because when you flip it, you're going to get a one-to-many, which isn't a function. So let's complete the square. Take that two out. I bet you didn't think you'd have to use the complete in the square again, but you do. Take the 2 out first, because your a value is more than 1. Leave the constant on the outside, it's so much quicker. And now you can complete the square. So x minus, because there's a minus there, 3 over, so half of this thing. 3 over 2 divided by 2 is 3 over 4. Squared minus whatever that thing is squared, so minus 9 over 16 plus the 1. Times everything by the 2 x minus 3 over 4 squared, minus 9 over 16, so that's minus so a 9 over 8, and you end up with, that's 8 over 8, minus 1 over 8. That's your f of x. Why is that helpful? Because now you know where the turning point is. Your minimum value, so f of x min, occurs, is the same as your minus 1 over 8, and this occurs when this thing is 0, so when x is 3 over 4. That's C2. Uh, well, C1, actually, yeah. That's C1. Okay, so if we were to draw this accurately, we've got uh, minus 1 over 8, that's here. You've got 3 over 4, that's here. So the bank, we're there. And we only care about the graph beyond that turning point. So our domain has been restricted. So we're going to restrict the domain to make it a one-to-one -one so we're saying x is greater than or equal to 3 over 4, and our range, you can see f of x is greater than or equal to that y value, minus 1 over 8. That helps, doesn't it? Because whenever you're trying to find the domain and range of the inverse, you just literally switch it. I don't even need to do any maths. I'm just going to say domain of the inverse, f to the minus 1, well, that's x is greater than or equal to minus 1 over 8. The range of the inverse well, that's f to the minus 1 of x is greater than or equal to 3 over 4, right? Okay, all we've got to do now is find the equation of it, though. Why did we complete the square in the first place? Because we could have just differentiated and find the turning point from there. But we might as well kill two birds with one stone, because we now need to let... Remember, if we uh, reflect this thing in y equals x, all the x's and y's swap position. So f of x is the same as y, so let x equal 2, f to the minus 1 of x, minus 3 over 4 squared, minus 1 over 8, and now we need to make f to the minus 1 the subject. It's going to bring it down here. So let's get rid of that, minus 1 over 8 first, that's x plus 1 over 8 is 2, f to the minus 1x, minus 3 over 4, all squared. We need to divide everything by 2, so that's x plus uh, so that's x over 2 plus 1 over 16. So that's got rid of the 2. We need to square root it. Normally we'd plus or minus it, wouldn't we? Talk about that in a sec. And now we need to move that 3 over 4 over, and we finally get f to the minus 1 of x equals 3 over 4 plus or minus square root x over 2 plus 1 over 16. But we know that the domain is x greater than or equal to minus 1 over 8, and f to the minus 1 of x is, over, is greater than or equal to 3 over 4. And we know it can't be plus or minus. Because think about it, if it was plus or minus, then that means we've included this whole curve, and when we flip it, it's going to go uh, 
like that. And that's not what we want. We don't want both branches. So we don't use the minus branch. So cross that one out and it's finished. So we must state the domain and range. We must state the function, but watch out for that plus or minus. So no plus or minus because it needs to be a one, two, one only. Okay. And that's it for inverses for now. <laughs>